Hey guys, Heidi Easley here at Texas Art and Soul, and I teach you how to make many teaching paint parties. And I am actually going to be painting a ginormous surfboard today, as well as asking you a very important question. Are you an introvert or are you an extrovert? Now, I'm gonna explain more why that's important and how it can help you. But as you come on, go ahead and tell me hi. I'm gonna put the camera down a little bit so you can see this giant surfboard. And go ahead and tell me hi and let me know if you are an introvert or an extrovert. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I have learned recently that's going to help you either way. Hello, Priscilla. Priscilla, you just won, didn't you? Hey, Tammy. Okay, so um, those of y'all that know, if you have been texting me all summer long, I am giving away, and Priscilla was our first winner of the fun package. So I'm gonna be getting some fun stuff together for her. Okay, so we have an introvert. Let's see who is an introvert versus an extrovert. I may have to put the camera back a little bit because this, this is a really big surfboard <laughs> and I'm going to be doing some blending. Hey, Barbara. Hey, guys. I have missed y'all. I actually had went to Florida for about four days, Panama City Beach, Florida, where my business started, all of that great stuff had started. Hey guys, oh, we got lots of introverts. Oh my gosh, I have something to tell y'all. Hello, Norma, hey guys. And yeah, I have something to tell y'all about that. I learned something at church yesterday. I'd never heard this before. Don't look, don't look. Oh, extrovert. Y'all, I, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but I am, I'd say about, uh, about, I don't know for sure, but, I'd say I'm probably like 70% introvert <laughs> and then the rest extrovert. I think people just assume that I'm an extrovert because I can be an extrovert when I need to be, but I really, really value, um, let me move these flip-flops, not real flip-flops, painted flip-flops. <laughs> let me move these painted flip-flops. Hold on, I'm gonna back y'all up here. Let's back this up because I have a really big surfboard to paint. How's everybody doing? Okay, introvert, we got another introvert. Hello, Kellyanne. Hello, Renita. Go ahead and let me know as you come on if you're an introvert or an extrovert, and I'm gonna explain something very powerful in just a second. I'm using a teal mint. I'm also using a Calypso blue, and I'm also using a true blue, and then I'm just using a chip brush, okay? And then all I'm doing is I put a piece of masking tape just some cheap masking tape. And then I'm just gonna do kind of a blend here. And let me know if you are both or if you are mainly an introvert or if you're mainly an extrovert. Like I said, I'm probably more introvert than I am extrovert. Um, I think the artists in us are that way. A lot of times artists are more introvert because we, we're constantly like, you know, daydreaming and thinking of the things we wanna create. And there's just a lot of like, before we ever create stuff, and let me know if this is you, before I ever create a painting or a design, it's in my brain and in my head for sometimes months before I start to, to put it onto paper and start to create it. So let me know if that is you, because I found out something yesterday at church that was really interesting, and I had never heard this before. And I'm so curious. Lana says extrovert. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Madeline. I try to be cheerful. <laughs> it's like I came out of nowhere. <laughs> Hello from Illinois. Oh, we have Mount Pleasant, Texas. Yeah, you let me know where you're at. Julie says a mix of both, introvert, but definitely love my alone time. Yeah, that's how I am. Like, I love being around people. I need it. I thrive on it. But then I have to have my time alone. And what I heard yesterday I don't remember who said like what quote it came from, but then I was researching it a little bit today and it said an introvert, get this. And that just took a few seconds to blend that by the way, a few seconds. Um, let, oh, I think I'm about to lose. Hold on. The whole stand is about to come at my face. Hold on one second. It's about to hit me. Hold on. Sorry y'all. See, I take a few days off and then all my stands, I actually clean my art office. And some of y'all saw my um, fireplace because one of my big dreams was to have a fireplace in my art office. <laughs> and so if you saw my fireplace, let me know. I'm so excited about it. Um, okay, let's see here. I had a 
question, I think. Okay, so we have a lot of mix. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, standing in front of people, Becky says, yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. I heard this on Sunday, and make sure you have texted me. Like I said, I'm going to be giving away all summer. I'm actually cleaning out my art studio because I'm trying to redo it and make it this magical place. So whenever I paint with y'all, you can see my art studio, and it'll be like we're kind of transported. It's in my head. <laughs> it's in my head of how I want it to be. Hey, Sherry. Hey, guys. Um, but what I wanted to tell you is that, and um, make sure you text me because I'm going to be giving away stuff every week this summer from my text list. So Priscilla O'Brien was the first winner. And all I do is I just go through my text list, click somebody and say, hey, you won. And then I'll announce to the entire text list of who won. Um, and then I'm just kind of packing up some stuff in my art studio and shipping it to you. So very, very excited to share that with you. So here's what I heard yesterday. The, ten, the, the introvert, not the extrovert, the introvert influences 10,000 people in their lifetime. That blew me away. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I want you to type, if you just heard me, I want you to type 10,000. So get this. This is not the extrovert. This is the introvert. So it was saying the person that is an introvert is influencing at least 10,000 people in their lifetime. Think about, think about what an extrovert does if an introvert is influencing that many people. The reason I wanted to share this with you is because I know a lot of you that, that watch me and that follow me, you are doing a paint party business or you are creating a business online through your painting. And the reason I wanted to share this with you is because I am, you know, obedience has been a word for me for, for quite a few years now. And with obedience, and let me know if you've ever, ever picked a word of the year. But quite a few years ago, I picked the word obedience. And this word keeps coming back to me all the time. Like every time I, am, I hear it, it's like, it's almost like I feel like God is like, just be obedient. Just do the next step. Just do the very next step. And I am telling y'all, it is... It is scary when you are obedient and when you are doing what you think, I'm going to pull this tape off. Um, yeah, Angela, it's crazy. It is crazy to think that somebody who is introverted, who is probably thinking they're not having much influence, is reaching 10,000 people in their lifetime. Oh, good, Michelle. Very exciting. So what I want to tell you with that is, no matter where you're at, like if you're trying to start a business or you're trying to do something like that, it doesn't matter if you're starting a business, if you are just going through this life and you're painting, if you're an introvert, you are minimum, like on the minimum influencing 10,000 people. So the reason I bring this up, hey Julie, hey guys, the reason I bring this up is because I know for me, obedience has been a huge word. It keeps coming up for me. It's like, do the next step. Do the next step. Do the next step, right? And so what I want you to know is that whatever your word is or whatever next step you think you're supposed to do, um, you know, I'm a big you know, person who I, I pray and I try to listen the best I can to what I think God's leading me to do next. But think about how when you are creating, when you are turning this into a business, whenever you are um, sharing God's love through art, whatever your passion is, whatever that's about for you. Think about if you're an introvert, you're 10,000 people in your lifetime you're gonna influence. So for those of y'all that are extroverts, get ready. Think of how many people you're gonna influence. So I want you to really look inward and I think this is why I wanted to come live just, just for a few minutes while I was painting. I wanted to come live and just share with you because I think a lot of times the introvert thinks maybe, ah, I don't really, I don't really like, you know, who's going to listen to me or who, who am I going to share with? Because a lot of times the introverts, and, and again, I saw many of you say you were an introvert. I think a lot of times the introvert thinks that they're not influencing, that they think that they're not sharing or that nobody's watching when it's very, very quite the opposite. I had no idea that that amount was for an introvert. 
So I want you, as you come on here, first off, say hello. I just did three more colors. I just did a purple pizzazz, a royal fuchsia, and a coral blush. This is actually for a um, commission piece that I'm doing for, for um, somebody right now. So I thought, why not do this while I talk to you all about how crazy this is that I just learned. <laughs> why not? Why not share this with you? Hey, Pam. Oh, so good to see you on here. Hey, Debbie. Yeah, so, so go ahead as you come on, a couple of things. First off, say hi. I love to say hi to y'all. If I don't see your comment while I'm painting, I love to try to go back and see your comments after, okay? So, oh, thank you, Debbie. You're so sweet. Um, yeah, I think Debbie and I are um, both mermaids at heart. I didn't realize she was such a beach girl, too. I knew she lived by the beach, but I didn't know she grew up in California. I didn't grow up by the beach, by the way. I grew up in Texas, but then lived in Florida for almost 10 years. And that's how I start. That's how these surfboards come into play. I started with, you know, teaching surfboards and painting surfboards and all of that good stuff for my first business. But, but basically what I wanted to share with y'all today is go ahead and post if you're an introvert or an extrovert. And we were just talking about how an introvert will influence 10,000 people in their life. 10,000. <laughs> I'm just blown away by that number. I had no idea that that was so high. Like I, I thought maybe for an extrovert, but not for an introvert. So I want y'all, those of you that are introverts and you're thinking, oh, what I do doesn't matter, or oh, what I say doesn't matter, or oh, you know, it's okay, nobody's watching me. That is untrue. It might be your, your daughter, it might be your son, it might be a family member, it might be somebody that is, you know, close to you or not close to you. You know, they always talk about the, the butterfly effect, things like that. Um, and I want you to know how much potential, how much potential you have to help other people through, if you're doing paint parties, how you're going to be able to share God's love through art. You know, that's like my whole mission when I'm teaching. Yeah, it's um, Coral Blush. Thank y'all for saying that, by the way. Yeah, this is just a commission. I think I charged $150 because I cut the wood. Well, my dad cut the wood for me. I didn't cut the wood, but my dad did. Um, but think about how much, like, here's the thing, y'all. Doing, doing a business, yes, at first, when I started a business, it was all about making extra money, right? That's usually why people start a side business. It's about making extra money. But then it has to be about more, or you won't keep doing it. You just won't keep doing it. If it's not about something more, hey Cindy, hey guys, you won't keep it up. It will get too much. You have to have a strong reason for why you continue to get up every day and do this. Whether you're teaching a paint party or whether you're doing kits or whether you're doing online, there has to be a stronger reason than just money. And so I really wanted to take a moment. I didn't want to stay on here too long, but I wanted to first off say hi because I've missed y'all. <laughs> it's been kind of crazy because I was gone a little bit. And so I wanted to say hi and remind you about texting me. All you have to do is text me once and then you'll be on the list and I'll, I'll scroll down and, and pick one person every week this summer to give something away. I'm actually cleaning out my art studio and giving away some of my fun extra stuff in my art studio. Um, it's fun stuff. It's, it's not like you stuff. It's good stuff. Um, so make sure you text me. But then I just wanted to share how important it is. No matter where you're at in this business, whether you are just starting, whether you are, are doing stuff in your community, whether you are thinking about doing this, whether you don't have a business at all and you're just painting for fun, you have so much influence on the people that are around you. And I want you to remember that, you know, my passion is all about sharing God's love through art and how we, some of the people that we influence, we don't even know. We don't even know what will happen. We don't even know that maybe something we have said. Has anybody had that before where maybe you've said something to somebody, but you didn't like to you, it didn't, it didn't mean it was just kind of like you were going through your day. 
and then maybe a couple months later or even a year later somebody said oh my gosh you said something to me that that meant something that mattered has anybody ever had that let me know if, if that's you hey lisa from alabama hey guys yeah, let me know if that has ever happened to you. I would love to know. Oh, and this size of the surfboard, let me see. This is, oh, and for those of y'all in Paint Party Headquarters watching, um, this is from our friend Julie Ferris. This is her design, um, and she is in Paint Party Headquarters. She's actually part of our team, too. So if you're in Paint Party Headquarters, this design's in there, as well as we have the, the mermaid tail in there as well. So for those of y'all in Paint Party Headquarters, you can find it there. Oh, and I'll be doing the Q&A here in just a few minutes. Hey, Carol. Hey, guys. Aw, thank you. Hey, y'all. Let me measure this real quick. And um, this one is a uh, 10 and a half wide, whatever, whatever that is. I have, I have a bigger measuring stick in my, in my art studio, but I'm at my office right now. What's 18 plus 18 plus 10? Can somebody do the math? 18 plus 18 plus 10. So 36, 46, is that right? 46, I think that's right. I didn't bring water in here. Y'all, like I told y'all, I cleaned my art office and I was so proud of myself, but I forgot to put water in here. Um, uh, Natalie says, yeah, somebody told me that I saved her life by what I told her a few months sooner. Oh my gosh, see what kind of influence you had? And you probably didn't even know that. Um, Kath says, I've had kids come back and say that a lot. Oh, I love that. Yeah, those of y'all that are in a teacher role, for sure. Um, let's see, Anita says, yes, I have. You have said some powerful words that have meant a lot. Oh my gosh, that is so, so cool. And um, Char says, I've had someone tell me Friday that she pulled a Char. <laughs> y'all, okay, so I have to tell y'all a story. Um, I'm adding some more of the purple pizzazz, just kind of blending it. But um, so I was a teacher for 10 years. And one year, so for many years, I did this ginormous chalk um, festival. And I would coordinate like the entire school. I would have 800 and something squares. We would actually, I would get usually the older kids to help me and we would um, put these squares out. We would, you know, have these like three by three foot squares all over the school. And um, can we use the regular paint for the mermaid tail? Yes, you can, Denise. So those of y'all in Paint Party headquarters, you can use the regular paint, but the metallics are so, so fun. So fun. Um, so anyway, so what I would do is I would coordinate this huge event every year and it was this big chalk festival. And so it had been inspired by Tracy Lee Stone, which I'm so thankful to have gotten to meet her. And I got to work on one of her teams in Kitty Hawk. We did this really cool event um, in Kitty Hawk where we did a big 3D chalk art of the, um, the Wright Brothers. It was like this big festival. Anyway, it was amazing back in 2016, actually. And so I had been coordinating these big festivals with the schools I was working at. And hey, Stephanie. Hey, guys. And um. And so anyway, so I was, you know, really stressed out because I was getting this, um, all of these, you know, I was ordering like thousands of dollars worth of chalk. I had to do fundraisers because if you're a teacher, you know that that is not our budget. And so I was doing fundraisers to get all of the chalk, you know, ready because I wanted to use this really, really good chalk that cost about a dollar a stick. It's these giant pieces of chalk that um, Tracy Lee Stem had told me about and I wanted to use them because I wanted the festival to be perfect. Another funny story, one time a kindergartner came to hug me and he had chalk all over his hands and I, I had like butt prints on my shorts. It was crazy. But anyway, that was, I was like, oh my gosh, no. But, um, but what was so crazy is I was like so stressed. I had so many logistics for that festival and I wanted everything to be perfect because at the end of the day, we had every single, um, every single grade level would come out and we'd have a hundred and something people at a time doing these chalk things. And we had like, for weeks, we had planned it so that, you know, each person's chalk design was like a mini mural. And so by the end of the day, it went from, I mean, we would have the news out there. Like it was a huge event and we would always like, you know, have the news. We would have like kids being interviewed and we just made this, this really awesome event for our school. Well, I was really stressed out 
because I was planning this massive event and I had a kindergartner, the sweetest little girl. She, so I had this stack of all this chalk that I had ordered like a thousand something dollars worth. And she had um, come in, they all, you know, the kindergartners would come in and sit. Well, she had grabbed it and the whole thing busted on the floor. And I immediately was like, why did you do that? Like, you know, kind of like, not in, not in like a, like yell on her face type of way, but enough to make the poor girl cry. This is a five-year-old, like a five-year-old who's just excited. She's ready to get on the floor and talk to us about, you know, the painting and, and the chalk art, what she's going to do. And I said, why did you break that? And then I saw her tears and I thought, oh no, no, that is not how I want her to remember me. And so I was like, I took a deep breath and I said, oh my gosh. I said, I am so sorry. I was like, this is just chalk. It's not a big deal. It's totally fine. And I hugged the little girl and I said, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. And, um, and I had to change the way I was, I was coming to her because I was letting the stress of what was going on with this event take over and then this poor five-year-old who has been on the earth for five years who was just excited to be in Miss Easley's art room and now she broke something and I'm upset at her and I was like is that how I want to influence her is that how I want her to remember these chalk moments like we all have those times when we like freak out and we say things that we shouldn't say or that we get upset and then now our influence has been something negative and so I want to encourage you, if you do have those moments, which were human, let me know if you're human and you have had a moment. <laughs> I said something to Pixie the other day that was not nice and not appropriate because she stole my hamburger and I was really mad. And, <laughs> and so I want you to know, like, it's, it's, we're human. We're going to say the wrong things. But the, the part of it that we have to remember is how are we going to react after that? Are we going to just let that go or are we going to go... No, let me change that. Are we going to go, wait a minute, that wasn't right and I need to change that. Because remember, introverts, you have, you're going to influence over 10,000 people in your lifetime as an introvert. So those of y'all that have an extrovert sense in, in you just like I do, remember that you are going to be influencing a lot of people regardless if you are a, a business person or you're just painting or you're just going about this life you know in whatever you know circle you're in and um, Annie says I was a personal trainer for over 13 years and remained friends with some of my old clients I was told many times how I saved and changed people's lives I hope I can do that with my painting clients see you on the Q&A later Heidi oh my gosh I love that and you will you will Susan says, I'm totally human every day. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am so glad I'm not the only one. Yeah. Jacqueline says, I am not a real robot. I'm a human. Yeah. I felt like crap. I, when I saw that little girl's eyes and her starting to like have those alligator tears, I was like, how dare I? Like, how dare I be that person? Like, no, it's okay. Kids break stuff, you know? Um, Leona says, I feel like the guy on the roof during a flood and he declined help three times. And when he asked God why he didn't help him, God said, I sent help three times and you turned it down. Heidi, you have been sending me emails for a long time and I enjoyed them so much. But for some reason, I didn't hear you till now. I think God just thought now was the time. Oh my gosh, I love that. Yeah, that's a really good um, saying for sure. Um, okay, so y'all, real quick, for those of y'all that are just joining us, I, if you missed the, the story, I would love for you to go back. I think it's important that we figure out what our, our purpose is, what is going to make us wake up and show up and help and influence. And because regardless, if you choose to influence people or not, as we just found out, you will be influencing people regardless of of what you're choosing to do um, and it doesn't mean you have to be on a Facebook live to influence people like seriously you can be at home you you're influencing people every day for the good or for the bad whether you like it or not have you ever heard that quote it says you can either be an example of what not to be or an example of what to be because we're you're gonna be one or the other it doesn't matter if you want that or not, but you are an example of what to be or you're an example of what not to be. And so 
I don't know about y'all, but I really, hey Melissa, hey guys, I really want to hope that I can be an example of what to do, what to be. And, and again, I think that comes back to that obedience. That word for me just keeps coming up. It's like, I'll try to pick a new word. <laughs> I'll try to have a new word in the year and obedience just keeps coming back. So I want to challenge y'all that whether you're an introvert or an extrovert to make sure that whatever you're doing, we have a chance to correct it every single day. You know, his mercies are new every day. That little girl that I yelled at that was crying in my art room, I could have just left it like that and she would have had that feeling about me for life or I could have changed it. And so I want you, I want you so much to know that, you know, if you've always had a negative attitude or you've always seen, you know, the glass half, em half empty or you've always, you know, had this feeling of like, well, nobody notices me. Like, I'm not here to influence anybody. Nobody notices me. That is not true. It's not true. Your kids notice you. Your neighbors notice you. The way you treat the cashier in the grocery store notices you. You have influence everywhere you go. Rita Barker, who's in Pain Party Headquarters, I love her so much. She's like, she's one of those that taught me about, like, when you're in the grocery store, you ask how they are, but don't just ask. You show them that you care. And I love that so much about her. And that's why, like, in a grocery store, like, when I ask a cashier, how are you? I mean it. I want to know how they are. I want to know that, you know, that they're important. And I think that's part of, you know, how you can show God's love no matter what you're doing, whether you're painting, whether you're teaching a paint party, whether you're going to pick up the kids, whether you're doing groceries, whatever it is, make a conscience effort. I don't think that's the right word. I don't think I said it right. Conscience, con, conscience, conscience. Y'all, if you're new to me, I don't always pronounce words right. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You know what I'm saying? Make an effort to go, okay, maybe yesterday I was grumpy, but today I'm going to wake up and change. I'm going to be different. Um, Ava says, I'm a bus driver, and we had a five-year-old pulled off the bus. Nobody explained to him, so I took time to explain to him. He cried until I told until I told you, felt bad for him. Oh, that's... It says, good, bad, or ugly, you are noticed. That's very, very true. Oh, thank you, Teresa. Yeah, I, I felt so bad that day. Oh, my gosh. I felt like when I saw that girl cry, I was like, because my, one of my goals when I became an art teacher, one of my goals was I wanted to be the class that made those kids want to come to class. Like, that was one of my, like, main goals. I want people to, you know, be able to go, okay, I can't miss school today because I have art class. Like that's how and passionate I was about making something really cool for these kids. And the same thing with my business. Like I want people to want to come to my paint parties and want to be on this Facebook live because hopefully they're going to be inspired. Hopefully um, you're going to learn something that you can take back and so and do for yourself or, or change something in your life. So I think it again, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, what this is about. And again, for me, it comes back to being obedient. It comes back to, you know, money is great and you're going to make money teaching paint parties. It's a really great way to make money. But you have to have something that is going to keep pulling you back or it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. You have to have a more powerful reason of why you do what you do. So if you have never thought about that, if you've never um, written that down, if you've never journaled about it, I want you to, to write that down. And if you want to put it in the comments, I would love to read it. Um, but I think you have to have a powerful reason. Mine is sharing God's love through art. I felt like this is my mission and this is what, the way I'm able to talk about it. And this is the way because it, it has healed me. It has helped me and still helps me so, so much. If I'm having a bad day, if I'm depressed, if, you know, we have a lot of feelings as artists. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have noticed that about yourself, but we got a lot of feelings, a whole lot of feelings. And sometimes we just need to crank up some music and paint and get those feelings out and have something to look forward to, have something to be excited about. So many things as artists that we can be excited about. 
So I want y'all to know that you have influence no matter where you're at. You could say, well, I have, I only have 200 people on my social media. That's not what I'm talking about. You have influence everywhere. Okay, so don't think just because you don't have a big following or you don't have this or that, that you don't have it. So I just wanted to come on here and, and share that with you. I have a Q&A with my paint party headquarters, so I got to jump off here, but I just wanted to say hello. I wanted to um, make sure you know that whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, you have so much influence. We talked about at the beginning that the, the introvert over their lifetime will influence 10,000 people. That is massive. That is a, that's a big calling for anybody. So I wanted to just bring that to your attention and just know that what you do matters. And um, no matter how much you think that people aren't seeing you, they see you. And I'm not talking about just on social media. I'm talking about your life. I'm talking about your day in and day out. And then if you want to get some prizes, like I said, I am giving away every week this summer. I am um, clearing out my art studio because I'm redoing my art studio and making it into this awesome fairyland that I have in my brain. <laughs> and so I will be updating y'all along the way. If you want to be a part of that, all you have to do is text me at this number. And um, Pixie put this together. This eight is real. It's really an eight, not a B. So if you need to screenshot this, you can screenshot it and then text me after, but the B is really the number eight, okay? So text me here. I'll leave it here for five more seconds. If you wanna screenshot it, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so you can text me and then um, every single day, I'm, I'm sorry, no, 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 I lied. Every single week this summer, I'm gonna be giving away something cool. All right, guys, I hope y'all had a great time. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if this is helpful um, or not, or if you like this kind of stuff, if you want me to talk um, you know, about mindset while I'm painting, about um, some cool stuff that I am excited for y'all to, to think about and learn about and do. So anyway, I hope y'all had a great time, and let me know in the comments if you did, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye, guys.